Hello and welcome back to the How to Get an Analytics Job podcast. In this episode, we're going to talk all about how recruiting works in the analytics job space. And specifically, we're going to talk about three things. Number one, how to set up and optimize your LinkedIn so that you are getting recruiters reaching out for you. And this doesn't matter if you are looking for mid, senior, or even entry-level jobs. We're also going to talk about the pros and cons of in-house recruiters, so recruiters that work within an organization, or recruiters who are working for a third-party recruiting firm. And then we're going to round out this episode with my experience getting recruited. Bear in mind, I have over six years of experience in the analytics space, but I thought this would be an interesting insight to provide you on what it might look like once you break into the analytics space, get some experience under your belt, and what options might be afforded to you. First, let's start with LinkedIn. LinkedIn is your professional branding landing page. So what this means is this is essentially your website and it's plugged into a social network within the career space. So the main way that recruiters are finding candidates or potential candidates to fill jobs is through LinkedIn currently. And what you can do is pull up your LinkedIn page and you can click on open to and you can say jobs and then there, there's an opportunity for you to fill in specific roles that you are looking for. And you can also hide this from the public, so only recruiters can see this. Now that has been kind of a sticking point for a lot of my Greensboro College apprentices in that they are not quite ready to signal that they are looking for their next job. So if you set it to recruiters only, you're not going to make a public decry or announcement that, hey, I'm not happy with my job and I'm looking for the next thing. All right, so once you've set up open to work and then put in the right search terms, so these are potentially you could say, I want an analyst role, I want a business analyst role, data science, or you could even get more specific such as you wanna be a marketing analyst or a supply chain analyst. Do some research on what you think your next ideal job would be and make sure those are plugged in into the right keywords for what you're searching for. And that's going to help you show up in search results. So what these recruiters are doing is they have LinkedIn Premium for recruiters. So what they're doing is they are spending their days searching through LinkedIn to find eligible candidates that they can fill the open positions, either if they're the third party with the company they're working for, or if they're an in-house analyst or a recruiter, they're actually going to be looking to fill the position within their own company. This brings us to the topic of SEO, which is short for search engine optimization. And it's kind of wild that this is a business marketing concept that is starting to trickle its way down into your level. So what SEO is, is making sure that your landing page, i.e. your LinkedIn page, has all of the right keywords and the right brand message to catch the eye of the end user. And in this situation, the end user is the recruiter. So what you're doing is you're optimizing your overall brand to number one, have the right keywords in there. So when they search for uh, analyst in XYZ area, you're going to show either at the top or very close to the top of the list. So they can then click on your profile and check out what you have to say. And this is where the brand actually comes into play. So once you've got the right keywords in and you're ranking on search results, you then need to have a coherent message and also a solid work history or if you're looking for an entry level job a pretty solid brand around why you are a great candidate to break into the industry. So tactic one is to optimize your LinkedIn with the right keywords and the right brand to show up in search results. Another viable option is to for sure create that brand and the right keywords, but also create original content on LinkedIn. And this has worked for some of my apprentices at Greensboro College. So throughout the program, they work through six different case studies and then post them on LinkedIn. And that has actually caught the eye of quite a few recruiters that have reached out to my students for interviews. So creating organic content 
can boost your signal. And if the right people are commenting or engaging with that post, it starts to spread a lot wider. Thus, you have a much better chance of showing up on the newsfeed of a potential recruiter. So those are the two different options that I would say are really solid in terms of getting your LinkedIn page in front of the right recruiter. So number one is to optimize your portfolio or your profile um, in search results. And then number two is to create some really good organic content so that they might see some of the work that you're doing and it catch their eye and they reach out to you for an interview. Next, let's talk about in-house recruiting versus recruiting agencies. There are pros and cons to both. So with an in-house recruiter, they have a much stronger relationship with the hiring manager because they are literally within the same umbrella organization. So that is a much stronger lead. And I think that those are probably going to convert higher and they're going to be narrowing their search and not searching as wide. So if you can get recruited by an in-house recruiter, that's a really solid sign that you're doing something right. Next, let's talk about recruiting firms. Now, recruiting firms are a third party that work with multiple organizations. So you may not have as much success with an individual recruiter, but that being said, if you don't get this first job, there's probably going to be the next job or the job after that. If you can build a solid relationship with these third party recruiting firms, what you can do is set up a solid job pipeline for you in the future. So if a third party recruiter gets you in your first job, that means that they make a commission on that. So that means that they are very much incentivized to help you once they help you break into an entry level job, then they are very motivated to get you to a mid tier job, a senior job, or even a managerial job. And these are really solid, potentially long term relationships that you can build within this space. All right, so let me tell you about my experience with recruiters. Uh, this week alone, I've had a recruiter reach out to me who is in-house with the company looking to fill a senior marketing analytics managerial role. Now, let me just break down the email and I'll redact their private information. Greetings from ABC Company. I'm curious if you may be open to opportunities plus stock options. Uh, we're hiring a senior marketing analytics manager for our amazing team, and it looks like you have very complimentary experience. Pending your interest, I'd like to set aside a time to connect, and I suspect you'd be able to hit the ground running with our team. So they give a few links to their company, and they've also at attached a job description. What I think is really interesting about this recruiter is that I actually haven't toggled on open to jobs within my LinkedIn page. Um, I'm a little bit different than you are in that I have, have optimized my LinkedIn to be positioned to direct to consumer. So my objective with LinkedIn is to find more students for my analytics apprenticeship program and also to give my students at Greensboro College some really good information about the analytics space. So I am not really looking to optimize for upcoming jobs. That being said, I do have well over 10,000 LinkedIn followers. I've, I've optimized my LinkedIn page for the analytics space. And I think that's why I'm showing up within the search results. Now I did a little bit of research cause I was kind of curious about a senior marketing analytics manager role. And according to Glassdoor, it says the average salary for that position is $130,000 a year. And the range is anywhere between $82,000 and $230,000. Now, this company is not a name brand company, so I don't think it's going to be on the upper end of that. But it might be anywhere between $130,000 to maybe $170,000 a year in salary. So I just wanted to give you some insights into how potent LinkedIn is. I also wanted to just give you an insight into if you're just breaking into the industry, what the salary range might look like, you know, five or six years into this space. Let me tell you, it's well into the six figures, especially if you do a really good job of working hard, developing your skill set, and also garnishing some major wins within your company. And this is one of the key things that I'm telling my apprentices 
within my program is that you need to quantify the impact that you're having within every role that you have. And ideally you want it in dollars and cents, but percentages are pretty valuable as well. And this kind of gets back to that first point of building that brand on your LinkedIn page. If you have all the right skills, you have years of experience, and you've also shown that you've provided a solid return on investment from the company um, to you as an asset, then you are going to look really, really bright in terms of the recruiters both in-house and in a third-party recruiting firm. That pretty much wraps up my thoughts on recruiting. And I will say that this is a very potent way to break into the space. And I have switched up my apprenticeship program so that we've started optimizing their LinkedIn on day one. And already some of my apprentices in this current cohort have had multiple recruiters reach out to them and they've even lined up their first telephone interview. And this is only two weeks within optimizing and toggling on open to opportunities.